Hi guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we will be starting to build the code for our data pipeline. The first thing that we need to do is we need to import our data file. So let us first get the file from GitHub. So let's open up a new tab or open the web browser and then we search for Ebesys GitHub. Click on the first link and then we select the WaterWatch repo. And then this is the file that we want, database.csv. That contains the data that we'll be working with. And then click on download. Okay, so once we have the page open, we now click on, we right click and then save as. Okay, and now we are going to remove the .txt extension and just keep the .csv extension. So I already have the save in my downloads folder, so I will cancel. Okay, so once we have saved the file that we'll be working with, let's go back to Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and now we are going to add a few more import statements. So it's from pyspark.sql.types import all so we want to be able to detect the data types of our data set that we will be working with as well as be able to convert from one type to another so we need to use so we need to import uh, pyspark.sql.types in order to do that and then from pyspark.sql.functions import all Okay, so we also need to do some uh, data type conversions from one type to another. So we'll need to use uh, some of the SQL.functions uh, methods that are in there. And as well as being able to um, manipulate the data that is in the data frames. We also need to use functions for that. And that's why we import SQL.functions. Okay, so make sure that the data that we or the code that we had previously is being removed and all that we have is the import statement to initialize find spark and now we are going to actually add the code that we'll be working with to build our data pipeline okay so in the second cell once we have our import statements we are now going to configure our spark session configure spark session okay spark equals spark session okay dot boulder dot master so in python all we would do is just add a space or press enter and then move on to a new line but spark doesn't uh, necessarily work in that manner so if you want to add a new line you basically add a backslash at the end right so it means that we are still busy um, with this line of code we are still busy appending to um, the spark session so you can write all of this in one line but in order to make it uh, neater we are going to write it underneath each other so in order to um, add a new line we need to add this backslash um, character okay so it's master the master that we'll be using is local meaning that we will run spark or we will run the spark job that we are developing in our local machine and then we can pass it an argument of two we are telling it to assign two cores to this job you can assign more if you have more to offer Right, and by assigning more cores, you will allow, allow the job to run faster, right? Because you are giving it more processing and parallelism power. Okay, and then we are going to add an app name, right? So this will be the name of the Spark job so that when it runs, we'll be able to track it using the Spark UI, and then we can see where the job performs the best and where it struggles so that we can optimize it 
and maybe add more resources, etc. So that's why we specify an app name so that we can trace it when it uh, gets executed. So the app name will be Quake ETL. And then we add a configuration. So when we run the Spark job or we run it in the terminal and we say Spark submit, we can add command line arguments. So this is basically what the config is. It's adding a command line argument to be executed um, before our Spark job runs in the beginning. Okay, so we are telling it that we want to download a package or import one if it doesn't exist. So we pass it the packages and then we are, we are going to pass the package that we want. So the package that we want to include is called Mongo Spark Connector. So what Mongo Spark Connector is, it allows Spark to connect to our MongoDB database. So that's a driver that allows us to do that. And then it allows us to be able to write um, data to um, tables or collections in, Spark, in MongoDB, as well as create databases and also read from collections into Spark. So it allows us to read and write into MongoDB. Okay, so once we have that, we can now get or create our Spark job, right? So it is, as it says, it gets the job if, it's, if it exists. If it doesn't, then it creates a new session or a new Spark job. Once we have that, shift enter. And the next thing, let's just make some space here. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to load the data set that we have downloaded from GitHub. So we will be using data frames to work with our data set. So we need the path to the file that we have downloaded. So my file has been downloaded into the downloads folder. So I'll just add the path to the downloads folder as well as the name of the file. Okay, so let's create a data frame called df load equals spark dot read dot csv and then r for raw string. And now I'll fetch the path to my file where it is in my machine, which is in the downloads folder and the name of the file and then we are also going to add header equals true because we are telling it that the file does contain a header and that we should include it into our data frame as the header of the data frame and now let us preview df load to see if we have successfully loaded our data file So we'll just be um, displaying the first record. DF load dot take one. Okay, so we loaded the first row or record. And as we can see, we have data. We have the magnitude value, the latitude and longitude value. Okay, great. So it means that we were able to load our csv file into a data frame and now we can use that data frame and then manipulate it okay and the next thing that we are going to do is as you can see there's quite a lot of uh, fields and there's a lot of them that we don't need so we are going to drop the ones that we don't need so let's create a list of all the fields that we will drop so it's drop fields we don't need from df load so it's lsd drop columns equals so i'll fetch the list of all the fields that we don't need okay so the notebook will be made available so that you guys can also copy and paste the code that you need okay so that's a list of all the fields that we don't want so df load is equal to df load dot drop. And then we add a asterisk LST 
drop columns. So now it will drop all those columns and then assign the new data frame with all the columns dropped that we don't need into DF load again. Okay, and now we can preview DF load to see how it looks like. So it's DF load dot show five. So the show method will um, display our data in a table format, meaning that it will have fields, it will have uh, records, and it will be displayed as a table. Whereas here we have all our rows displayed in a list when we use take. The reason why we use take is because if we use show, you'll see what will happen. There's too many fields. As you can see, it's very unneat and it's very unclear to make out what's going on because there's just too many fields. So that's why we use take instead of show in this case. Okay, so once we have cleared all the fields that we don't need, we should have a slimmer data frame, which now we can use the show method. And we show five, meaning the first five records of the data frame. So it's shift enter. So as you can see, now it looks much neater and it's in a, a form of a table. So these are all the fields that we need and we have dropped the ones that we don't. Okay, so now we have DF load. And now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a field to DF load, which is the years field, right? So what we will be doing is we will be extracting the year from the date string, and then we will convert that year into an integer and then create a new field for it called year. And then we will assign all the year values to that field. Okay. Because in our reporting at the end, we'll be working with the year field and not necessarily the date field. Okay. So let's add a year field. Create a year field and add it to the data frame. It's df load equals df load dot width column. So width column adds a field or does other operations like change the name of the field or, or basically um, convert the data type of the field. Sorry, that's what I meant. So width column and then year. This will add a new column called year. And then we cast the year field or the year portion of the field that we will extract to a year object. And then we cast the date string into a timestamp. So it's two timestamp date. And then we add the format of our date which is day day forward slash mm capital mm and then um, small letter y y y y day month year okay so what we are doing is we are converting our string date field into a timestamp and then we extract the year value from that timestamp and then we assign it to the year field. Okay. And now once we have done that, let us preview our data frame and see if we manage to add the year field successfully as well as extract the year value. So it's df load.show five. Okay, as you can see previously, this is how our data frame looked like. So now here we have created a new field called year, and then we've extracted the year values from our date string. Okay, and now 
the next thing that we need to do now is create a second data frame right and we will basically be extracting the year field and then we are going to count the number of occurrences for each year which is the number of records in our data frame for each year so we'll be using the group by operation okay so let's build our data frame so the next data frame that we'll build will be called um, DF quake freak or frequency which means frequency of earthquakes by year okay so build the quakes frequency data frame using the year field and counts for each year so df quake freak equals df load dot group by year dot count okay and now let us first see how that looks so now let's preview df quake freak let's just make some space so it's df quake freak dot show five shift enter as you can see we have the years and then the count so the number of um, rows for each year so each row is the occurrence of an earthquake so as you can see type is equals is earthquake and the latitude and longitude the location of the earthquake and the date in which the earthquake occurred as well as the depth and the magnitude of that earthquake right so therefore if each record is an earthquake if we look at this data frame each record belongs to the year 1965 so in 1965 we have one two three four five earthquakes so if we had to group this data frame as we see it year by year we would have a year field which will be 1965 and then a count of one two three four uh, five records so that's what we're doing so now we group by here for the whole data frame and then we count how many records there are for each year and that will be the number of earthquakes for the year right so now the next thing that we need to do is just rename our count field to counts with a capital C and an S at the end so it's dot count dot with column renamed and then the column that we want to rename is count comma and then we want to rename it to counts with an s okay that's what we want now let's rerun the cell as you can see we have renamed that column so this is what we want and at the moment this is what our frequency data frame looks like okay so we'll also be using this data frame for reporting at the end okay so now we have our two data frames and we will possibly be using them as tables as well so once we have done the data transformation and the data cleaning and we have uh, cleaned the data frames into a format that we can use to report on we will then store them as tables in mongodb okay so that is it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one